Hey, what's up guys? My name is Eternal. Welcome to episode 39 of Game Programming. So today we're going to take a look at the entity framework and sort of how we're going to pretty much use entities in our game. So first of all, what is an entity? An entity is, it's actually really hard to define what an entity is because it kind of de depends on really what you define an entity being. Because the thing is, technically you could, I don't know, um, make time an entity, right? Um, so for example, if you were using something like Game Maker, and I do have some experience with Game Maker because I actually haven't used Game Maker uh, in about five years, but six years ago, um, I actually entered a game competition and obviously, I, you know, didn't really know a programming language back then, so I used Game Maker. But the thing is, um, in Game Maker, for example, j just so you guys can sort of relate, well, you, you sort of create objects for everything you do, kind of like programming, I guess. But what you do is you sort of, they're pretty much called ent entities. So in other words, if I wanted something to keep time of my, um, you know, if I wanted something to just keep time of something, so like physical, like to measure time, then I would still create an object that would measure time and I would pop it into my level, but it just wouldn't have a sprite. So it'd be invisible, but it would still actually physically be in my room, I guess, as they were called. Again, maybe Game Maker's changed, but this was like Game Maker version six, I think back in the day, um, yeah, like six years ago. Um, so yeah, um, you know, you'd still like create, I guess, time as an entity and you'd actually physically place it into your level, but it just wouldn't have a sprite so it wouldn't render. It's not exactly how things work here because, you know, we obviously have to actually create the fact that it can have a sprite or not and something like time just wouldn't. It, it would just be a separate object running in the background. Now, so what an entity is, is it doesn't necessarily, have to have a sprite, okay? Um, I'm not gonna force that upon it, but what it does have to do is it needs to get rendered in some way. And you guys might be like, well, hang on a minute. If it doesn't have to have a sprite, you know, what is it rendering? And that's hard to explain, but I'll, you know, I, I guess I'll sort of show you guys and you'll see what I mean. So over here in, uh, in, in our rain directory over here in the navigator, I'm just gonna like, right click here on the rain folder, hit new class. Cause we're gonna create our own package for this and it's gonna be called entity because entities are, you know, pretty damn important. Um, they're gonna be like their own, their, their, own, their own like whole structure. So, and we're just gonna call it entity and that is the entity class. So what does an entity have? Now, an entity, an entity has an X and Y. Um, an entity, and I can't even say it, entity, has a a few things. It can be it okay, I'm not sure how the okay, let's just let's just do this. So public boolean removed equals false. In fact, I'm gonna make this private. So something like removed basically means if it's been removed from the level or not. Simple as that. Um so it's also gonna have um because entities sort of are in levels, it's also gonna have a protected level variable. Um and that's probably gonna be enough for now. Um, I might also give it a final random, a protected random variable, just because we will use random for things like AI in the future. So yeah, let's just control shift O to import everything here. And we will obviously import our version of level, not Java's. And there you go. So all of these things um, are gonna sort of work. Now, X and Y, um, this stuff is sort of redundant if your entity is not going to have a sprite, but I don't really want to split this up into two fault to into, into like two classes where one sort of has, you know, a sprite and one doesn't. So I'm just going to pop it here anyway. Um, yeah, but the other methods that entity has to have is update. Now this update method is actually, if we go back into our game class, this update method is going to link right into our update method in our original thing. So in other words, what I mean is the update method will actually be running at 60 frames a second, at 60 updates or other per second. It's going to be run, uh, it's going to be ran at 60 times every second. And our render method is obviously going to be, you know, ran as, as much as we can, unless we, you know, unless the, the player chooses to limit it to 60 by using, I don't know, VSync or something like that. Um, and we'll just import screen. So yeah, public void render is just going to have screen screen. So you can see that we don't actually have where to render it. We've just got screen screen. And the reason is that entity, entities move. 
tiles don't exactly move. You know, we sort of just browse through them, I guess. Whereas entities actually, you know, they actually move. That's why they, they've got their own X and Y. Um, or they, they, they don't necessarily have to move, but you know, they can. So we don't really want to constrict it to, to that. Remember, we're, we're sort of trying to, by creating this, this is, this is really an abstract class. Um, by creating, you know, this abstract class, we're basically saying that, you know, um, it, it, you know, this is like our, this is like our template. So yeah. Um, public void remove. Now this is very important because this is, this is actually what's going to remove a, an entity from our level. So we obviously have to, we can't obviously do that now. We will set removed equal to true just so that if we check that, we can actually check it. Um, in fact, I will make this public. Um, well, we could, we could do it this way. Okay, I'll keep it private just for purposes, but if I do is removed and I make it a boolean, oops, um, <clears throat> then, you know, basically return removed. Um, and there you go. So that will basically, you know, check if it's removed or not. Um, but, and you know, we can still keep this private to not cause confusion. Now over here is where we'll actually, oops, that lagged a lot. Um, remove from level. This is actually where we're going to remove the actual entity from our level. So in other words, you know, we haven't actually made that made that method left uh, yet. Yeah, we're gonna talk uh, a lot about removing in the future. Not now though, um, because this, this is sort of where this series is gonna start getting complicated. And one of the reasons it's gonna start getting complicated is just because of the sheer amount of ways you can do the same thing, okay? Um, so just a quick disclaimer, as this series progresses, this is my way of doing everything. Now, I've seen over the past episodes, people are being like, oh, why don't you just do this? And a lot, of, a lot of reasons I don't take the simple path all the time is because of um, performance. People don't realize that doing things with less code doesn't necessarily mean it'll run faster or it'll you know, run cleaner, I guess. If you do things with less code, you could end up actually running slower. And even if it's a couple hundred FPS, that makes a big difference because you can think of it as a percentage um, and it's, it's really important to try and maximize performance. So sometimes I'll actually, you know, do things the long way, but it, in the end, you know, you get faster performance. And the other thing is, um, yeah. So again, another disclaimer, the rest of this series, it's going to be my opinion, um, and what I found works and what I found is, is, um, what's the right word, um, is versatile enough to actually use um for for our for our game so yeah but anyway that is the end of this episode guys i hope you enjoyed it please hit the like button if you did and next time we'll probably move on to actually creating a player class and creating our little player on the screen so i'll see you guys next time bye mm -hmm.